Welcome back guys. Today we will be doing the sticker shop from TryHackMe. In this challenge, we will explore XSS vulnerability and how it can be used to establish connections to the attacker's server and read the contents of sensitive files. Let's read the problem statement. Your local sticker shop has finally developed its own web page. They do not have too much experience regarding web development. So they decided to develop and host everything on the same computer that they use for browsing the internet and looking at customer feedback. Smart move. Let's get started. First, when we browse the page, you can see there is the CAD sticker shop. And it actually contains two listings. The first one is CAD sticker 1 and CAD sticker 2 along with the prices. But if you attempt to interact with these products, as you can see, you can, they are not clickable. And there's a note here that says, we only sell stickers at our physical store. Please feel free to stop by. Additionally, you can right click and click on view page source. And here we try and attempt to find out if there are hidden elements here, such as notes, comments left by developers. As you can see, there is nothing. Let's go back and take a look at the feedback. In the feedback here, there is a form that takes users input in here the customer or the user is supposedly uh, asked to provide the, their feedback about the products so here to take a look at how this works we can fire per suite connect per suite to foxy proxy i'm using the attacker machine and here we can go to per suite click on intercept off to make it intercept on go back and here we try a test. Okay, so this is the request. And here we take a look at the raw form or the pretty the prettified form. As you can see here, it is sent to slash submit underscore feedback. That's where the request is sent to the backend server. And here we can see other information about the host, such as the IP address, the port and here we can see the text or the inquiry that we have sent now to inspect the response we can right click here and uh, click on do intercept or do not intercept requests do intercept response to this request we want to take a look at how the response or how the response looks like so we click on forward and here we have the response this is the CSS of the page. And here we have the response. Thanks for your feedback. It will be evaluated shortly by our staff. Okay, click on, go back here to the page. Still processing. We're going to go back and forward. And that's what that was the response. Okay, so long story short, we want to test if the web server is vulnerable to cross-site scripting. One of the popular ways to test for cross-site scripting is to uh, play with the input fields or input boxes. Here we have an input box that takes users' feedback. So we can try first with this. The typical test for cross-site scripting is to try and pop up an alert box. For example, script alert and say here hi here we are testing for reflected cross-site scripting so we're going to make sure that perp suite is working it is on now for now i'm gonna click on intercept on to make it off because i don't want this to keep listening for now we're gonna monitor the browser response to this so if i submit this and i receive a pop-up that says hi the conclusion is that this form or the web server is vulnerable to reflected cross-site scripting and it is nothing so this means that the form may not be vulnerable to reflected cross-site scripting but hey there are other forms of cross-site scripting such as stored and blind probably here we are facing blind sql blind cross-site scripting because we cannot inspect the response the, the server response to the XSS payloads. Now, 
to, to test this in a more transparent way, we want to use actually the terminal, make, take a look at the configuration of uh, the network interfaces. Here we take a note of the IP address of the current machine. Next, I want to fire a listener. Let's say 8002. And here, if the web server is vulnerable to cross-site scripting, I want to make it send a request to the server that I just turned on. So what I can do here, I can use image DAG. Okay. The source, let's say it equals to X. And when there is an error, when an error happens, what I do here, I send a request to my web server using fetch in JavaScript and here the address of the web server let's go back and copy the IP it's actually here written here on the top it is 10 10 to 1 146 and don't forget the port that I selected for the server to listen on so 8002 and the rest is the closing tag of the image so here when I send this it's going to attempt to fetch uh, an image from this source this the X doesn't exist right so an error will be thrown upon throwing the error the condition is specified here on error there is a request that is made to this destination all right so that's the uh, function of this XSS payload now if the server is vulnerable to XSS is going to execute this for me so I'm going to submit and here I'm going to monitor the server behavior. Okay, so we have a request. It is a GET request. So here it's a GET request. And this is the host. This is my host. Where the request comes from? It comes from this IP address. So connection received on this IP address. This is the IP address of the machine. That we're testing so this confirms the theory that this it is vulnerable to cross-site scripting because it executed the xss payload that i have sent let's go back to the problem statement here we need to read the flag at this destination so actually you want to turn cross-site scripting into information disclosure maybe or reading sensitive files so we want to harness the fact that it, the, the server is vulnerable to cross-site scripting and read sensitive files based on that uh, conclusion. So what we want to do here, when I go back to the uh, input box here and craft a payload, a payload that will actually send a request to the flag okay, and transfer the contents to my machine. So typically here, we're going to go back first to the terminal and allow the web server or start the web server or maybe a listener on port 8003 okay that's the first step now the next step is to make a request to my web server but this time instead of an empty request or an empty get request it will be a request that contains the contents of the flag how are we going to do this let's see how this works we're going to go back to browser and here we craft our payload so we're going to use the same method image tag the source is um, X and then on error uh, we're going to send a request so here let's say first fetch this time instead of sending the request directly to my server I'm going to make a request to retrieve the contents of the flag meaning here the request will be sent to the same local machine hosting the uh, vulnerable website so HTTP slash flag dot text okay now the next thing i want to do i want to use then so when the contents of the flag is accessed we want to use a then statement here the then statement will allow us to craft another request to another web server so here then let me specify maybe a query parameter or a response let's see the response here it's, it's r and then we will send this to um, 
the response will be in text format first okay let's now close the so we have uh, one more parenthesis to close so now we format the response using the R right in text format then we want to send this we're gonna use another then here R will be sent to <coughs> um, the web server that's listening here the web server in my case it is my web server listening on port 8003 so after I store the contents of the flag in the R parameter and format it in text I want to send the contents here to my web server using again fetch we're gonna use fetch and the IP address of the attacker machine the port it's 8003 let me make sure this is correct so it is correct 8003 all right so now I assume that the flag or the contents of the flag is sent but we want to specify uh, the, the variable that stores the contents of the flag in my case it is R I want to specify R here in the parameter so I'm gonna use a query parameter here C equal um, plus R so we have one more parenthesis here to close and this is it let's see here Okay, so I have one single code here and this is the query parameter C that stores the contents of uh, or will actually transfer the contents of the variable R R stores the contents of the flag okay then I'm going to use catch and use another variable here the variable name will, could be maybe M and then I'm going to send this to another fetch request and inside the fetch request I'm going again to use the same information I used earlier it is the uh, URL here that I used so I'm going to use the URL um, wait and the same query parameter this time here again it's, it's going to be e two parentheses to close the full statement and then i have one double quote for this one and the closing tag for the image let's see if this will work after waiting for a bit we can see that the request there's a get request from the vulnerable server and it actually contains the flag note here that the flag is stored in the parameter c that we used in the url okay now there could be another way to do this challenge basically you can write a full javascript wrapper so here we can start another listener maybe and do this another way let's go back to the form what we can do here we can actually write a javascript code that will do the job if you didn't like the one-liner we used through the image tag you can use a full javascript code and send the contents of the flag to your server for example let's say we have a variable var and the target here we define a target uh, it's going to be the flag.text okay now another variable let's see it's attacker server we name it attacker and it contains the URL so it's 10 10 21 146 8004 and maybe here we can just use maybe um, um, anything you want text the next thing we define another variable here the variable will be the request so let's say it is a request new xml http request okay and then we have request on the state change we define a function to handle the request
let's ha let's have this over to maybe um, a text editor. Okay, then we have an if statement here. We're going to work with the request we defined earlier. So request dot ready state equal to this. That's the if. And here in the if statement, the condition will be the actual request that will be made to my server. So fetch, again we use fetch, and the variable that actually stores the value of the server parameters is attacker. So attacker here. And then we want a question mark here, plus the actual response. Response is controlled first to the request. We can have the request here and maybe use the response the text. So that's my if statement. Let's see this. Now we're going to close the function here. And last, we're going to use request.open. And define the define get as a type of request. The URL will be the target URL we have, which is here, flag of text. So we have target true and then request.send null. Now that JavaScript code here, I'm gonna copy this, we can wrap it in side script tag so script okay so 8004 let's make sure the listener is running it is running let's go back um, have this over here and submit as you can see the flag now can be seen within the get request so that was it. I hope this was helpful and informative. Thank you.